You've probably heard of African lions, but did you know North America had lions too? Not zoo escapees, not some weird fossil cousin. Real lions, massive, powerful, continent-dominating predators that lived here for thousands of years. But here's the weird part. While lions made it across the Ice Age land bridges into North America, tigers never did. So, how does one big cat make it into the New World while the other, just as deadly, just as ancient, stays behind? Panthera atrox, the American lion, was an absolute monster. One of the largest cats to ever exist, bigger than today's African lions, bigger than most tigers. Some individuals may have weighed up to 400 kilograms. That's not just a lion on steroids. That's a predator that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bear. It showed up in North America around 340,000 years ago and quickly made itself at home. From Alaska to Mexico, it ruled the open landscapes of the Ice Age. Wide plains, dry shrublands, edges of forests, anywhere large herbivores roamed, it followed. And North America had a buffet. Bison, prehistoric camels, horses, giant sloths, maybe even young mammoths if they caught them isolated. This wasn't a delicate ambush cat, it went after the big stuff. Its build was different from modern lions. Longer legs, more stretched out, probably faster over long distances. Not built for jungle stealth, but for chasing prey across open ground and bringing it down hard. Social behavior? Probably not like today's pride structure. There's no solid evidence of pack hunting. If anything, this was likely a more solitary cat or maybe operated in small temporary groups. Deadly either way. And for a long time, nothing could challenge it. Not saber-toothed cats, not dire wolves, not even the infamous short-faced bear. The American lion was as top-tier as it gets. But like most Ice Age megafauna, it didn't survive the end. Around 11,000 years ago, as the climate warmed and prey disappeared, so did the American lion. While the American lion was making itself at home in Ice Age North America, its striped cousin was taking a completely different path. To understand why, we have to go back to the beginning. Tigers most likely evolved in northern China or somewhere around the Tibetan Plateau roughly two to three million years ago. That's what the oldest fossils suggest. From there, they slowly expanded their range, first into eastern and southern China, then Southeast Asia, and eventually down into India, Sumatra, and Java. A northern population eventually gave rise to the Siberian tiger, which pushed into the cold, coniferous forests of eastern Russia. But throughout all that expansion, tigers remained solidly Asian. They never crossed into the Middle East, never reached Europe, and despite existing for over two million years, they never crossed the Bering Land Bridge into North America, even though that bridge was open several times during the Ice Age and allowed many other animals to make the trip. So, what happened? Why didn't one of the world's top predators ever step into the New World? First, tigers simply weren't in the right place at the right time. Most evidence points to tigers arriving in northeastern Asia very late, likely near the end of the last ice age. Fossil records and genetic studies suggest that they didn't inhabit far northeastern Siberia during the last glacial maximum around 20,000 years ago. And if they weren't in that region, they couldn't access the land bridge that connected Asia to Alaska. Some modeling studies even suggest that tigers only pushed into the Bering Strait region around 10,000 years ago, after the land bridge had already vanished beneath rising sea levels. Compare that to lions. Their ancestors, the Eurasian cave lions, were already well established across Europe and Siberia much earlier. They had time to reach the far north, while the land bridge was still exposed. That's how they crossed over and gave rise to the American lion. Tigers? They missed the window. Tigers are creatures of cover. They evolved for stealth, not for long-distance chases across open terrain. They thrive in dense forests, jungles, mangroves, and even swampy terrain. Even the Siberian tiger, which can handle freezing cold, still sticks to forests where it can hide and stalk prey. This preference for vegetation was a huge limiting factor during the Ice Age because the Bering Land Bridge, 
also known as Beringia, wasn't covered in forest. It was cold, dry, and largely treeless, a mix of tundra, grassland, and permafrost. Good grazing land for mammoth and bison, but useless for a stealth hunter like the tiger. Meanwhile, lions had no problem with that kind of environment. Both cave lions and American lions were built for open terrain. They followed herds across the mammoth steppe and didn't need trees or dense cover to hunt effectively. Tigers were locked into the woodlands further south, too far to reach the bridge and not well suited to what was on the other side. Anyway, let's say, just for argument's sake, that a few tigers did manage to wander up to the edge of Beringia. Even then, the odds were still stacked against them. The land bridge wasn't a simple crossing. It was a vast stretch up to 1,000 kilometers of cold, windy grassland with very little cover. It's not like crossing a forest path. For a jungle-adapted cat that relies on short bursts and close ambushes, traveling across a flat exposed expanse with no hiding spots was a nightmare scenario. And migration doesn't happen overnight. You don't just drop a tiger on one side and expect it to build a population on the other. You need enough individuals to make the journey and survive long enough to find food, avoid predators, and reproduce. Without proper habitat and prey along the way, the whole thing breaks down. Let's say one more hypothetical. Somehow, a few tigers did make it across. What then? They would have walked straight into a battlefield of apex predators. North America during the Ice Age was no place for newcomers. The American lion was already dominating open habitats. Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat, was running ambush operations further south. Dire wolves hunted in large, organized packs. And the short-faced bear, or Arctodus, was a hypercarnivorous, kill-stealing tank of a predator that dwarfed everything else. On top of that, jaguars and cougars were already present in the southern forest's habitats that might have suited a tiger if it had made it that far. In ecology, it's hard to break into a new ecosystem when every niche is already filled. Even if tigers had arrived, they would have had to fight for space, food, and survival in an environment already packed with heavyweights. And this isn't a case where you just muscle your way in. Apex predators are incredibly territorial, and tigers, being solitary, would have had a hard time holding ground against more social or better established species. Now, to be clear, this factor probably didn't keep tigers out. They likely never got close enough to try, but if they had, it wouldn't have gone well. So when people ask, why were there lions in America but no tigers? The answer isn't that tigers were less capable. It's that everything had to line up perfectly. And for tigers, it just didn't. They evolved in Asia. They stayed in Asia. They were limited by terrain, timing, and habitat. By the time they were ready to push north, the land bridge was gone. And even if it hadn't been, the crossing was inhospitable and the destination was already occupied. Lions caught the window and carved their place in North America. Tigers missed it and stayed rulers of the East, so they never made it across during the Ice Age. But what if they had? Or what if somehow we introduced tigers into North America today? Could they survive? Strictly from a biological and ecological standpoint, yes, they could. Especially the Siberian tiger. Siberian tigers are already adapted to cold climates, deep snow, and northern forests. They survive brutal Russian winters and thrive in boreal ecosystems that look a lot like parts of Alaska and Canada. These tigers take down elk, wild boar, and even brown bears. They're absolute powerhouses. North America still has similar prey, moose, elk, deer, wild pigs in the south, and even bison in some areas. If dropped into a remote forest region with enough cover and game, a tiger could absolutely make a living. But that's just one side of the equation. Because surviving doesn't just mean finding food, it also means avoiding people. And that's where things get complicated. Modern North America is not Ice Age North America. It's fragmented, loud, filled with cities, roads, 
farms, and people who don't want 300 kilogram apex predators roaming through their backyard. The same isolation that kept tigers out before would now work against them in a different way. Habitat loss, conflict with humans, and lack of large protected wilderness areas would make it nearly impossible for a wild tiger population to take hold. Not to mention, we already have apex predators here. Grizzly bears in the west, black bears across most of the continent, cougars nearly everywhere, and wolves reclaiming territory in some regions. Unlike the Ice Age, though, today's North American predators tend to avoid conflict with people. Tigers don't always do that. There is also the ethical angle. Reintroducing tigers, even in some hypothetical conservation scenario, could easily disrupt the balance of existing ecosystems. They're solitary, territorial, and would likely clash with native carnivores. And even if you did release them in a remote area, they're smart and mobile. It wouldn't take much for one to show up near a town or livestock herd. And that's when people stop supporting the idea real fast. So, could tigers physically survive here? Yes. Thrive here long term, naturally or peacefully, that's a different story. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.